Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. All righty. Praise the Lord. Well, tonight, Brother Jeff is ministering, and uh, we, we know he's going to bring a good word, so we're excited about that. God is good, amen. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good, amen. Hallelujah. I never get tired of saying that because the more the more I say it, the more it, the revelation of it begins to resonate on the inside of me. And I start thinking on the goodness of the Lord. I say, God, you sure are good to me. And then you just 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 start. Lord, you good to me. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You just you woke me up this morning. You started me on my way. You know, a lot of people wanted to wake up this morning. They couldn't do it. They would have loved to wake up this morning. Couldn't do it. Stiff as a boy. They woke up somewhere else. They hit eternity, and they were ill-prepared. They would have loved to see another day where they could proclaim the name of the Lord before they topped up out of here. But we are here, amen, in the name of Jesus. Well, I want everybody to, to you just kind of, you just kind of knocking, the, doing a little ice breaking here, getting everybody, you know, get you comfortable, get you... You know, get your get your Bibles ready. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get into the Word as we always do, and we want everybody to just just be comfortable, just just relax in Jesus, Amen. And we want everybody to be expecting, Amen. You know, not of me. Don't expect of me. You're gonna be sadly mistaken if you expect of me. I want you to res expect of Jesus. Expect of the Holy Spirit. Expect of his ability to speak a word in season to meet your need where you are right now. Because we all are facing things in our lives that we need a word from the Lord to give us our next step. You know, the Bible says it this way. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And so in order to get the next step, you have to be expecting. And part of what my responsibility as a minister of the gospel is to uh, help direct your steps as the Spirit of God speaks and teaches through me to you. Amen? And so that's, that's what I want to try to endeavor to do tonight, to speak a word in season that's going to give you exactly what you need for your next step, for your next direction, for what God has next for you. There's always something next. Amen? There's always something next. Look at your neighbor and say, there's always something there's always something next. You're not done. Amen? You are not done yet. You're still drawing breath. God has something for you to do. Amen? Amen? So it's, it's, it's my responsibility to, to, to proclaim that to you and to let you see that God has something else for you to do. Something else for me to do. Amen? Praise the Lord. So we're going to pick up where we were. Where we were last time, uh, we were talking about a vessel unto honor. Becoming a vessel unto honor. You don't just start off as a vessel that God uses. <laughs> Some people just, you know, they get saved and they think it's just time for God to use them. And, you know, I'm getting ready to preach to the millions now. No, you're not. You're not ready yet. You got Jesus in your heart. That's great. Fantastic. You know, you you born again. You filled with the fire of God. Great. That's great. But you're not ready yet. You got some stuff in you got to come out. In Jesus' name. Amen. So you want to make sure that we you get all that we have here for you tonight. Because I think it's going to be a blessing to you. I believe it's going to be a blessing for you. Um, so let's go to the throne of grace. Let's go boldly before the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this, this day. We thank you for another opportunity to speak and teach and preach the word of God with boldness. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that the interest of your word gives light and gives understanding even unto the simple. And so we thank you, Heavenly Father, that your word is going forth with boldness and with power and with clarity. And we thank you, Heavenly Father. I ask you right now to 
speak through my lips, to process thoughts through my mind, to help me to convey to your people the words that you will have them to hear. And Father, I thank you right now that not only that your people will be hearers of your word, but also doers of your word. And we proclaim this, we declare it, we count it done, we thank you for it now, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, as we were forestating, uh, we were talking to you last time about becoming a vessel unto honor. And becoming a vessel unto honor, if you know anything uh, about the term a vessel, a vessel is merely uh, a container, um, a, something that holds something else. We are human containers. We are the only ones that can decide what goes in us or what stays out of us. You know, this glass cannot say, don't you put no water in me. I am built for wine only. The, the glass cannot decide and close itself up and say, no, I, I, you can't put, don't put that in me. But we can do that. We can decide what's going to go in us, what's going to stay in us, or what's going to come out of us. Amen? So it's a two-way two street in being a container. You can allow things in or you can put things out. Amen? And we do both as human containers. Amen? The human spirit creates you, uh, enables you to be a container where you can receive and when you can put out. Amen? And so that's what we're talking about. Our text scripture uh, is coming out of 2 Timothy 2, 19 through 22. And we'll be reading it out of, out of the uh, New Living Translation. It gives a little more, uh, a little more insight, a little more uh, clarity as to what the scripture is saying. It says, but God's truth stands firm like a foundation stone with this inscription. The Lord knows who are his and all who belong to the Lord must turn away from evil. In a wealthy home, some utensils are made of gold and silver and some are made of wood and clay. The expensive utensils are used for special occasions and the cheap ones are for everyday use. If you keep yourself pure, you will be a special utensil for honorable use. Your life will be clean and you will be ready for the master to use you for every good work. Run from anything that stimulates youthful lust. Instead, pursue righteous living, faithfulness, love, and peace. Enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord with pure hearts. And so that's our text scripture. And also we want to look at 2 Timothy uh, 3, 1 through 9. You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be difficult times. Can anybody agree with that? For people will become, will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from people like that. They are the kind who work their way into people's homes and win the confidence of vulnerable women who are burdened with the guilt of sin and controlled by various desires. Such women are forever following new teachings but they are never able to understand the truth. These teachers oppose the truth just as Janez and Jambres. I guess I'm saying it right. Throw a little Spanish on there. Opposed Moses. They have depraved minds and a counterfeit faith. But they won't get away with this for long. Someday Everyone will recognize what fools they are. Just as, here we go again, Genes and Jambres. 
whatever that brother's name is. If that is a dude, I don't know. It could be two ladies. It could be two men. I don't know. It's indescript. It could put like an M or an F for female or something beside and help us out a little bit. We don't know what these folks are. But anyway, these two people, you don't want to be like them because they messed up. Amen? Whatever their name is, they messed up. You don't want to be like them two folks right there. All right? So we're talking about becoming a vessel that God can use. We also remind you of the scripture that we used last time, Romans 12 and 1. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. As we forestated, my job is to help you develop a rock-solid, unmovable faith in Christ. My job is to do you like the, like the guys on the Saturday night, Saturday night Live, Hans and Franz. We're going to pump you up. All right, I'm dating myself. Everybody here should get that. Everybody here should get that. Well, Ben, ben might not get it, but it's all right. You'll get it one day. Just look it up, YouTube it. It'll be all right. Praise the Lord. But praise God. The Lord puts the requirement of change on us. Remember Romans 12 and 1, we just read it. It says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. So it's not, it's not your neighbor's responsibility. It's not your pastor's responsibility. It's not your boss's responsibility for you to change it's your responsibility. Amen? Now, of course, when we entered into this world, you know, remember, we just got through saying that we are all human containers. So we were filled. We, we have the ability to be filled with things. And when we were born into this world, we were born into sin. Amen? And so with sin comes so many corrupt things that enter into our lives. And as babies, newborns, as children growing up, you know, our little spirits just receive everything that's in our environment. And some things, sometimes they're not so good things that are in your environment that you absorb. So there are things that you are witness to, that you are exposed to, that are not good. Amen? And, uh, you know, being exposed to those things, they have an effect on you because they stay with you. Because you are, you have seen it. You have received it through your eye gate. You have received it through your ear gate. And now it's in you. It's staying with you. And it's, it's eroding away at you. It's affecting you in such a way that it affects your mental state. It affects the way you act. It affects the way you talk. It affects the way you, you uh, convey to other people. Because you have been exposed to something that's corrupt. Amen? But thank God we don't have to stay there. Amen? Glory to God. We're going to start covering that here in just a moment. But just to kind of preface things, you have been, the world has filled you with things from your very inception that are not necessarily good. But you know, Christ has come. Amen. Jesus said, but I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more in abundance. To the full, to the overflow. Amen? Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Praise the Lord. But you know, we can change. But glory to God, we can change. We don't, have to stay, we don't have to stay in that state. We don't have to stay in a place where we, we're, the world has dealt us, you know, this, this sour, these sour lemons, and we just, we're just stuck with that. You're just stuck with this basket of sour lemons. You're like, man, I didn't want this. You know, this sucks. But you know what? We take those lemons and we squeeze them out, put some water in it, put some sugar with it. You got lemonade, that cool, refreshing drink. Hallelujah. Praise God. You don't have to be stuck with lemons unless you like lemons. Some people, my kids like lemons. They, they, you, we get lemons at the restaurant and they want to suck on the lemons. I'm like, 
any way. But praise God, we don't have to be stuck. And that's the main part of what I wanted to say to you. We don't have to be stuck. You don't have to be in a rut. You don't have to be caught somewhere and then you find yourself not able to get out. If you've ever been, if you've ever been driving and you, one of your wheels got off the road or you hit a soft shoulder or something like that and you know, now you, you're trying to get out and the wheel's just spinning, wheel just spinning, wheel just spinning, can't get out. And some people's lives are like that right now. But thank God, there's a tow truck coming. Hallelujah, to pull you out your mess. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank God that there's a tow truck on the way, amen, amen. to pull you out. And Jesus has come to pull you out, amen. And hallelujah, there's no deductible. Hallelujah. You ain't got to pay right there on the side of the road. You done forgot your wallet at the house, and you, you know, you have trouble on the side of the road, man. You know, if you ain't got triple A or something, them boys want to be paid right away. But you know the price has been paid, amen, for you to be pulled out. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Going back to 12 and 1 and 2. Turn with me. Let's look over there at that scripture once again. Romans 12 and 1. And we're going to go down to the second verse with that also. Praise the Lord. Because we're talking about becoming a vessel unto honor. Amen. Going again, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now, Scripture number two, twelve two, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is this is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. As we forestated, you are a human vessel, a living vessel that can determine what goes inside of it. Remember we said that? The drinking glass cannot determine what goes in and out of it, but you can. Before coming into the knowledge of Christ, the world began filling you with its ways, cultures, and its moralities based on your seeing, hearing, and touching. Now that we are born again, we are constantly being challenged with what to let inside of us. I mean, you're being challenged on the TV and the news and at work and whatever you're doing out and about. And there are blessings or cursings that come along with what a person lets inside themselves. Both on the natural side as well as the spiritual side as well. However, it is, what, it is what one meditates on that creates the greater impact on your life. Did you get that? It is what one meditates on that creates the greater impact on your life. Joshua 1 and 8, turn there with me. Let's look at this. Joshua 1 and 8. Let me get there. One and eight. It says this. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. The meditation that moves you into action is what determines how successful you'll become. If your thinking does not move you to action, you're not meditating. You're just having thoughts, ideas, and opinions. Your success is gauged by what you meditate on, not by what your neighbor meditates on. You know, some people think on all kind of crazy stuff. I'm glad I'm not having what they're thinking about. <laughs> Amen? Because they're thinking cray-cray. Like, cray-cray. You don't want what they're thinking about. This is not just positive thinking. This is you agreeing 
with God's word for the direction for your life. You want to agree with God's word and think on that. Meditate on that. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Day and night means continuously. Thinking, focusing, putting emphasis on God's word. Why is it imperative that you put your focus on God's word? The reason why it's imperative that you put your focus on God's word is because there are so many other things coming at you at the exact same time. But you know you can, you can change your focus. You have the ability to decide what goes in you at any time. And that's a wonderful thing. Because, you know, before realizing that, being in the kingdom of God has, it, has that ability that you can change your focus. You know, I used to just be, like the Bible says, tossed to and fro. All over the place. Thinking about everything. Didn't have no idea that I could just be here. I could just be here. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't determine for myself that I was just going to stay here. But God's word gave me the power and the authority to stay here. Put my focus here. And that's what's so wonderful about the word of God. It gives you the power to stand. It gives you the, the ability to, to be what God called you to be. When I think about Deuteronomy 28 and 13, being the head and not the tail, I begin to own this scripture. That's a part of that meditation that we're talking about. You begin to own this. I am the head and not the tail. I am above only and not beneath. I am blessed coming and blessed going. I am everything I set my hand to, it prospers for me. And only then when you begin to own what this word of God is saying to you, can you have what it say? If you can't own it, you can't have it. If it doesn't become so set, settled in you that nothing else can change what this scripture says, you can't have it. You just practice it. But you just keep on practicing and let it become alive to you. You begin to see things with new eyes. I am no longer moved by people's opinion of me. Because everybody thinking something about you. And some people are trapped in that. They, just, they can't get nothing done because of what somebody's thinking or saying. But not, not anymore. Not a child of God. Not anybody that knows who they are in Christ Jesus. Amen? Now, whatever negative child things you were exposed to can now be eradicated by replacing those thoughts of the past with who you are now in Christ. I'll say it again. Whatever negative childhood things that you were exposed to can now be eradicated by replacing those thoughts of the past with who you are in Christ. They said you wasn't no good. They said you were trifling. They said you were worthless. They said you were stupid, ignorant. And they said some other stuff I can't repeat in, in kind company. But you know what? The good news is that you don't have to be held captive by that, by those words anymore. Some people are so, they're held down by those things. And they need to come into the knowledge of God's glorious gospel. Because they've been set free. Praise God. Can I get a good amen? amen. What does it say in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17? Why do we know that we, can, we don't have to be captive anymore? Why do we know this? 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says it quite plainly. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is what? A new creature, a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You do not have to settle for what the devil has tried to place on you in times past. Amen? 
call you fat, call you ugly, call you this, call you that. But you don't have to be held captive by that no more. Repeat this after me. I am becoming a vessel that God can use. Say it again. I am becoming a vessel that God can use. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Turn with me to Ephesians 5th chapter. We t- we're hitting the scriptures tonight. Amen. You are under no obligation to receive anything that I have to say if I don't back it up with scripture. If I don't back up what I'm saying with scripture, I'm just flapping my gums. And that goes for any preacher you sit up under. Not just me. And I learned that from my past. I learned that from great, great men and women of God. And that helps to settle you in the things of God. That you know where this is coming from. This is coming from God's word. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 5, 18. It says, be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the spirit. Now, you know, the Lord opened up my, you know, God had, you know, you can read a scripture a thousand times and get a thousand different revelations from God. God is so multifaceted. You know, the angels are, are going around the throne every time. Holy, holy, holy. And it has been explained this way. Every time they, they hit God coming around, they see a different side of God. And they've been doing this since time began. But you know what? God has so much revelation, so much, so much that he, he can reveal of himself. That every time we hit the scripture, we should be looking for something else. Something, something, something that we didn't see before. Something to expand our knowledge. Something to uh, ex- explain who God is in a better way. Amen? Ephesians 5 and 18, it says <clears throat> that we are to be filled with the Spirit. And here's what the Lord gave me as I was meditating on this scripture. He said, wine in this scripture is synonymous with, with the world. It says, be not filled with the world. You know, because wine is, is a carnal thing. It's, a, it's, it's, it's something to intoxicate. It's something that you put in your body. It's supposed to make you feel better. It's supposed to alter your natural state of uh, your mental faculties, which it does. Some a little faster than others. Some will just whoop your head, and you just, ooh. You, your head will be over here next week. You'll be like, what? How did I get on? You know? I done had some of that stuff. It don't happen. Mm-mm. Woo! Thank God for deliverance. So, we're looking at the word wine, and it's synonymous with the world. And we look at the word spirit, and it's synonymous with God's word. Jesus said it over in John 6.63. Turn there. John 6.63. Amen. Is anybody getting anything? John 6.63. Now remember, we're not counting on me. Because I'll let you down. But let's count on Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. John 6.63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. And the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you. They are spirit, and they are life. Amen? So as we are becoming vessels unto honor, becoming vessels that God can use, and we look at this Ephesians scripture 5 and 18, we see that we are to be filled with the spirit, which is synonymous with God's word. If we are to be filled with God's word, that's what's going to put us over. Amen? Amen? Glory to God. So we want to be filled with God's spirit. Amen. In times past, many of us knowingly and sometimes unknowingly have been instruments of the devil. 
I know I have. I know I have. And you may be asking yourself, why were you so susceptible to the attack of the enemy? Why was I just, just easy prey like that? It was because you were not fully persuaded. You were still a little shaky in your faith. Still a little shaky in your faith. Your foundation wasn't as firm and stable as it should have been. You were still thinking you could bluff the devil. Anybody know what the term bluff means? You know, when you're playing cards and stuff, and you know you're trying to make this other person think you got a hand you really don't have? And you're like, am I going to beat you or am I not? And you got a bunch of sorry cards in your hand, and you're hoping they bet, you know, they, they, you're hoping they fold and let you win the hand because you gave them a, a look like you don't want none of this. You were trying to bluff him. But do you realize you can't bluff the devil? <laughs> the seven sons of Sceva tried to bluff the devil, and they whoop, he whooped all the clothes off of him. Boy, it's bad. And see, the devil is the chief of bluffing. He is the king of bluffing. He's the author of all lies, and you're going to try to bluff him. You're going to be naked. Anyway, we forget that the devil is the master bluffer. We've got to be, you've got to be all in. Amen? In order for your faith to work, you've got to be all in. Can't be a plan B. Plan A is all that there can be if you're going to walk in faith. Amen? Praise the Lord. You know, Abraham was all in. And we're getting ready to cover that, man. I, you know, God really opened up my understanding on Abraham being all in. He was fully persuaded. And we ought to endeavor to have the faith of Abraham. Amen? Turn with me to Romans 4.19. We're going to look at how Abraham was all in. And we're just about, just about there tonight. Praise the Lord. Romans 4, 19, starting in the 19th verse. Let's go to the 18th verse. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded, that's that term we use, all in, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now, now we're talking about being all in. Being fully persuaded. Not let nothing deter you, nothing dissuade you, nothing to get you off track from what God told you. Amen? That's how you become all in. Amen? But let's back up for a moment. Being all in is not the same as being foolish. Can you say amen? amen. See, because see, some, people, some people get it twisted now. See, they hear this message and they say, well, I just got to be all in. You know, well, wait, well, wait, well, let's, let's clear that up a little bit. Some have gone under the guise of faith when they were just being plain out foolish. Got an example for you. Giving your bill money away in the offering thinking God's going to replace the money before the check hit the bank. And then you had the nerve to be mad at God, thinking he ain't come through. Fool, you done gave the check out. You were supposed to put the money in the bank to cover the check. Now you're at this high-pressure service where they put you in the pressure cooker. Oh, we got to meet the budget tonight. 
Who's going to help us? Who wants to be blessed in here tonight? Everybody raise their hand. Yeah, I want to be blessed. You know, who doesn't want to be blessed? You know, who want to be blessed in here tonight? If you come up here with the hundred dollar seed, the Lord is going to bless you. And they just run up. Oh, I got a hundred dollars for him. <laughs> the Lord's going to bless me. Well, let's clear that up a little bit. You might not be supposed to get a hundred dollars. You might have supposed to have paid your light bill. Because you're going to be in the dark. Because you sit there foolishly thinking that, you know, this is, you know, I'm playing the odds. You know, well, if I give this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a hundredfold return off of it. So I'm going to get out your calculator. Mm, that's a good odds. I think this is the stock market. It's not the stock market. God don't work like that. Number one, he say, oh, no man, nothing but love. Yeah. Let's get that scripture out. They don't quote that scripture. <clears throat> when they pressure, it'll put you in a pressure cooker, want you to give all your money. You know, so you have to watch. You have to watch whether you're being in faith or whether you're being foolish. Because I've been there. Yeah. I've been sitting in new congregations where they said, you know, you want to be blessed. You, you bring your seed up here now. You know, I could talk about this in real time. Because I've experienced this. Been there, done that. Got a t-shirt. And it said, fool. <laughs> Amen. So we want to we wanna be all in. But we want to know that we're following the spirit of God. Amen. Look at your neighbor. Say, don't be foolish. Amen. Now, it's easy for us to look at the scripture, Romans 4, and, and it's easy for us to see the faith of Abraham. And this is what's so good. God, God opened up, expanded my understanding of this scripture. He said, how over, how, he said, is it, it is, as we examine this scripture, it's easy for us to see the faith of Abraham. However, we omit Isaac and his faith here. We don't have... We don't have any record in scripture that's, that Isaac was special. You know, something was wrong with Isaac. He couldn't think. Right? We don't have any record of that. In fact, Isaac was normal by all accounts. Amen? But I'm sure that he was very concerned about this offering that was about to take place on the mountain. I, 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 you know, we, we like passions. You know, the Bible says, you know, we, we, we think, you know, the Bible didn't say, you know, we just went into this mental stupor like, oh, what's going on? No. So Isaac, this is whirling around in his head. Okay, we get ready to do this offering thing. Uh, if it were me, I think I'll do a little more probing <laughs> to find out how the Lord was going to provide for this sacrifice. Daddy? Yes, son. We're going to do this. We're going up to the mountain, right? Yes. Yes, we're going up to the mountain. We're going to, we're going to sacrifice unto the Lord. Okay? Mm. Wood. Check. Uh, uh, we got the, got, the, got, the, got the matches. Check. All right. All right. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Hmm. Well, maybe I'll look over here. Sacrifice. Hmm. Daddy. Yes, sir. Uh, we ain't got no. I know it's just an oversight. But uh, where the sacrifice at? The Lord will provide. Mm. Daddy. Yes, son. Could you be a little more specific there? You know, the Lord's going to provide. You know. No, Isaac didn't do all that. No, he did not. Now, me, I would have said, you know, Daddy, I hurt my leg. And, uh, 
I ain't gonna be able to make this trip uh, with you up to the mountain. Uh, I just, 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 just uh, man, this thing is killing me. I'm gonna have to go see. I'm gonna have to go see Doctor Doctor Two Shoes. See if uh, see if he can help me with my leg. You know, cause I ain't gonna be able to make it. I can't make this this, this trek up the mountain. Which I I catch you on the next one up. No, I just didn't do that either. And you know what? Isaac had strong faith, just like Abraham. We don't see where Abraham had to chase Isaac around the top of the mountain with a knife. Come here, Isaac. Dad, stop playing. Come on. Come here, boy. Come here. Come here, Isaac. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here, boy. Nah, daddy. Nah, daddy. Uh-uh. I can't do it. Nope. He lay right there. Now you got to have strong faith to be looking at this knife getting ready to come down on you. You, you ready, we, we doing knife catch and you catch it. Hey, that man has strong faith. Amen. But praise God, hallelujah. But you know what? We are becoming vessels unto honor. We are becoming vessels that God can use. Amen. Yeah. Now, you know, some, some things that we put things in, you know, you put honorable things in, in some things, and then, then you got a diaper genie. <laughs> that you're just glad to get that stuff out of your hands. <laughs> but you know, the diaper genie is still a, a vessel. Amen. Yeah. And some people are, some people just set themselves up to be a diaper genie. Just full of poo. Full of poo. But you know what? Jesus has set it up that we can be vessels unto honor. Amen? amen. And that's what we want to be. Amen? You don't want to be a diaper genie. Diaper genies, they get set in the, they get set in the very back most, uttermost corner part of the house where nobody can see it. Like a litter box. You know? But we want to be vessels unto honor. Amen? We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.